Before we can start integrating Drupal with Apache Solar, we need to get an, an instance of Apache Solar running that we can play around with. There's two different ways we could do this, and I'm going to cover it in two separate tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk through how we can install Solar on a local host for development. And in another tutorial, I'll walk through sort of the considerations that you want to keep in mind when installing Solar on a production environment. So in this tutorial, we're going to go through the requirements for running Solar on your local environment, and then we'll walk through downloading the Solar example application and running it. I'm going to be doing this on Mac OS. However, the process should be pretty similar whatever OS you're running. Ultimately, the requirements are we need Java in order to run Solar. Most modern OSs already have that installed. If you don't, though, you can follow instructions online for installing the Java JDK in order to run Solar. Setting up Solar on your local host is a really great thing to do if what you're ultimately doing is just practicing or doing some development work on a site that's hosted elsewhere and when you've got Solar hosted by another company. A lot of Drupal hosts like Acquia and Pantheon and, and many of the others include Solar hosting as part of their package. And so your production site could just link up to their Solar instances. But you'll still want to be able to work on things locally. So this is how we're going to run Solar on our local machine. There's some decent documentation available for this on Drupal.org, node slash 1999310. I'll put a link to it in the notes for this tutorial. That would be easier to get to. And you can read through the documentation here. It talks about setting up Solar. Some of it is a little bit out of date. In some cases, it talks about older versions of Solar. Here we're talking about Solar 3.6. At the time that this was recorded, Solar 5 is actually the most current version. However, we're going to be installing the latest version of Solar 4 because the Search API module hasn't yet been updated to work with Solar 5. It's really recent. It just came out about a week ago. So what we're going to need to do is ensure that we have Java 6 or higher in order to run Solar 4x. Then we need to download a copy of Solar to our local host. We'll take a look at the files that are included, and then we'll demonstrate how you can run the example application and start taking a look at the Solar administration interface and so forth. So the first step is just follow the link here to download the latest version of Solar. We can click that link. And that takes us to a page on the apache.org, so lucene.apache.org slash solar slash downloads.html. We're actually going to go to the link here for past versions because we do want an older version. Like I said, Solar 5 just came out. You can see it's 5.0.0 is the current release, but Search API doesn't yet support it. So we're going to go to the Apache archives, and then we'll find the latest version of the 4x release cycle. So here we've got 4.10.4. That's the one that we're going to be using. So I'll click on that. There's a bunch of files in here. You can download various versions of Solar. It's open source, so you can actually download the source code if you want to. We don't really need that for our purposes. We're just going to download the already compiled Java code and be able to run that. So select this version here, the solar-4.10.4.tgz. I'm just going to copy that link address. What I'll do is download that file. I'm going to switch to my terminal. In this case, I'm going to download the Solar files into my working directory for the site that I'm building in this tutorial. If I list the files here, you can see I've got a directory named docroot. Inside of docroot is our Drupal installation. Inside of data and misc are various things that will be ultimately be bundled up and included with this tutorial. You can download Solar wherever you want to. You only need one copy of it on your machine. So you can just download it into your applications folder or user slash local or whatever, wherever you normally put these things. I'm going to go ahead and download it. The download from the apache.org mirrors can be a little bit slow sometimes. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this pause this and let it complete. All right, once that download's complete, I'll list the files and you can see I've now got this 10.4.tgz. The other one here is from an experiment I was doing earlier. I'm going to unpack this file. So I'll use tar to unpack it, like so. Extract all the files. And now I've got a directory, solar-4.10.4, like so. 
which contains a bunch of information about Solar, so a readme, license, and so forth. It contains a bin directory, which has executables, contrib directory, which contains plugins for Solar. The part that I'm interested in is actually this example directory. The example directory contains a example pre-configured, pre-compiled version of Solar and all of its source code into what is considered a good build for web applications. Whenever I'm running this on my local host just to do development work, I always just use the example application. You'll have to change some of the configuration, which we'll talk about in another tutorial where we look at how to set configuration that is specific to Drupal in a Solar application. But for now, let's just talk about how we can get it up and running. Here we've got this start.jar file. So this is a Java executable file. And what I can do with Java at the command line is type the command Java dash jar start dot jar, like so, and then run it. And what this will do is use Java to start up an instance of that jar file, which is basically our solar application. It's got one core configured already named collection one. That's just the default which we'll be making use of. This works great, again, for localhost. You could run it in the background if you wanted to. You could just start it in a terminal and, and run it as needed for your development work and then turn it off when you're not using it. When you're running it in production, there's other things that you need to keep in mind. Security being one of them. Performance. There are more performant ways that we could start and run solar. You also want to do things like set it up so that if the server needs to be reboot, it automatically starts the solar server for you. But anyways, we've got it running on our local host right now. I can confirm this by going to my browser. And in my browser, I'm going to go to localhost port 8983, which is the default port for this example solar application, slash solar. Doing so allows me to view the Apache Solar web administration interface. This confirms for me that Solar is running. I just started it about a minute ago. It tells me some information about you know, how much memory it's using, etc. I can go down here to my core selector, and I can see that I've got one core set up for Solar. You could have multiple cores for different sites and so forth. We're just going to be working with this one Solar core for our tutorial and demonstration purposes. So that's getting Solar running on your local host. In this tutorial, we took a look at the requirements for running Solar, which really just boils down to a modern version of Java. Java 6 at the minimum, 7 or 8, 8 being the latest release. I haven't had any problems running it with the latest versions of Java, so that is what I would encourage you to do. The process for installing Java is going to vary depending on your OS. Most OSs, though, come with Java already installed or have easy binaries for doing so. With Java installed, all we had to do was download the Solar source code and the example application from the Apache website, and then extract those files. And then we used the start.jar in the example Solar application to start up a Solar server. We were able to then confirm that it was running by visiting the Solar administration UI in our browser.